You know, the first time that happened to me, I was walking through the Meadows Mall, you know, the Meadows Mall here, mm -hmm. right after I had posed. And there were these girls walking next to me and they were snickering and, and laughing. And I thought, they're not laughing at me, are they? <laughs> and I just had to go get something. I was by myself. And one of them goes, oh my gosh, there's the girl that spread her legs for Playboy. And the other one goes, slut. And they <laughs> took off and I was like, oh my gosh, wow. But you know, even then I knew that was a reflection of them and not me. Welcome to Old God Talks to Me, a podcast dedicated to helping guys create kick-ass lives for themselves and those that they love. Ladies, if you want to know what your guy is thinking, this podcast is for women too. Each week, a special guest helps you create that life you've imagined. We talk anti-aging medicine, personal growth, relationships and hot sex. Yeah, you hear me, getting laid more frequently other guy vices, and topics that many don't want to talk about but need to. Just because you're getting older doesn't mean you have to be old. Don't want to miss anything? Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review this podcast. And be sure to go to www.thestandard.academy forward slash magazine and grab a free copy of our new digital magazine. The Standard Academy, where we talk about erogenous zones, growing hair back, and other things that will help you create that kick-ass life. Now get ready to listen up and share with friends. So, uh, so Karina, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about some of the, 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 the most uh, wildest and the wildest places that you've shot and some of the most interesting that happened, some of the most interesting backgrounds that you've had photo shoots in. Well, um, <laughs> back to Jamaica, uh, where this little boy almost killed me. We were, well, almost died twice there. It's kind of funny. Uh, not really, but Richard Fagley, one of my favorite photographers I've ever worked with, he's no longer with us, but, but he um, put a bed in Dunn's River Falls. And I remember Pat, the makeup lady, and all, everybody was so, they're like, what are you doing? This is crazy. And, you know, there's these guys who, in, from Jamaica that got this old, just antique, you know, frame bed and they stuck it in Dunn's River Falls. I mean, that's a waterfall and you have all your tourists walking up and they had dra draped me in this material that, that he wanted. He had this image of the material coming down the falls and me laying on this bed in a waterfall. It didn't quite work out, but we got some great images, just not exactly like his vision. <laughs> but, and then there was another waterfall that we hiked to and we were, it, uh, there was this little boy and I remember because it's a third world country and he was so excited because I always liked Happy Meal toys back, you know, I was a kid and I gave him this, it was a like a kaleidoscope thing and he was so excited and then he goes, he goes, go down the falls and I'm like, what do you mean? I said, you go first. He's telling me to go down this waterfall like you can slide down this waterfall and I look down and it is like, a hundred feet down or more. I'm like, you do it. I'm not doing it. And then he's laughing and laughing. He goes, no, <laughs> I'm like, you just almost made me go down. A I could have died, but uh, he was just teasing this kid, but, but that was a fun backdrop. Um, you know, we did a lot of di my, my, my playmate images for the centerfold shoot. The centerfold was shot in the studio, obviously in Chicago, but we went out in the field um, and it was, we shot in, I forget the ghost town. It's not Rhyolite here in Nevada. It's in California. I cannot think of it, but it was a ghost town. And there, it was just odd places that we went, went to, you know, and, and that was a lot of fun, just places I never would have gone. But, but 
I know that, you know, they, they didn't want to make too much of a spectacle. The most of a spectacle would have been the Duns River Falls, but <laughs> <laughs> that was the most people that, because there, you know, there were actual people. You couldn't stop the people from being there, but they, they were warning them. There's a Playboy shoot going on on the oh. falls. <laughs> <laughs> so there were, there were there other, any you know, scenes where you had like animals and things like that? Yes. Well, you know, when Hef went through the test, when he okayed me to be a playmate and said, you know, get the scaredness out of her and we'll have a playmate. Um, in Vegas, to be comfortable in front of the camera nude, they thought it was a good idea. Maybe, Mar I think it was Marie Erickson's idea to have me do a shoot with a live tiger. Okay. And this tiger was not declawed. And they feed them a lot, which I think is sad looking back. Lots of, you know, chickens so that they're more lethargic or whatever. But we went into the studio initially and this tiger went wild in the studio. I mean, why he saw the lights and it bothered him. And, and he, it was terrifying watching this tiger. He was just whipping at everything. I'm like, oh my gosh. So now not only is that going to make me I'm tr they're trying to get me comfortable in front of the camera. Now I'm just terrified for my life. We ended up doing a shoot with that same tiger in the owner's backyard. I laid on the tiger. I loved this tiger. It was um, allergic to it like I am cats, which was kind of funny. But, uh, but that was one. Um, and then I did a shoot on a horse in Jamaica in the water, Achi. I even remember the name, Achi. Um, and a goat named Alfred. I um, <laughs> you know, just thinking of animals that were around. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there was a goat one time. <laughs> I was on a horse and then a tiger. Yeah. Yeah. So Karina, so you've been, you've been a playmate, you're going around the world, uh, you're going to some hut, you're going to some fun parties, and you know, you're doing this and you're representing the, the Playboy brand. And, you know, I'm sure you're doing like car shows, all sorts of stuff like that and things like, you know, all sorts of events and things like that. When did you realize and what made you realize that it was time for you to stop being a playmate? Um, wow, that's an interesting question. Like just get out of that world or whatever. Um, honestly, you know, I even was a chaperone when my daughter was little I just you know because Playboy would still call so I never made that decision I never said oh I never want to work for them again that's how much fun it was to work for Playboy too mm -hmm. and great great money sure um nice chunk of change and and great contacts and people to meet and and that are still my my friends and associates but um I, I never really made, I know that sounds funny, but I never really made that decision. I think, I think the years just go by and obviously you're the hot thing when you're the playmate of the month and the playmate of the, you know, playmate of the year was a big tour. And then you're just making appearances, working for the brand. So I never made that decision, Forrest. I okay. Just, I just, um, it just kind of happened. It's, yeah, it's it just kind of happened. And then I had my family. I mean, I did turn down a lot of things, you know, they'd mm -hmm. be like, Hey, um, uncle cracker. I remember there was some, it, and people request the playmates, which is interesting to me. You know, you have musicians that maybe have an event and they wanted playmates there and, and they would call and hand select their, <laughs> their playmates. So it sounds funny, yeah. but, um, so and I just declined so many times. They probably stopped calling me looking yeah. back. So Karina, do, do, um, do people ever try to shame you for your choice of a career as a playmate? You know, the first time that happened to me, I was walking through the Meadows Mall, you know, the Meadows Mall here, mm -hmm. right after I had posed. And there were these girls walking next to me and they were snickering and, and laughing. And I thought, they're not laughing at me, are they? And I just had to go get something. I was by myself. 
And one of them goes, oh my gosh, there's the girl that spread her legs for Playboy. And the other one goes, slut. And they took off. And I was like, oh my gosh, wow. But, you know, even then I knew that was a reflection of them and not me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and my, um, my stepbrother was going to Occidental University. He ended up going to West Point and, and I'm so glad that he did. And I'm actually glad that he was even shamed. He had girls that knew that his stepsister uh, had posed for Playboy and they were giving him the hardest time. You know, that's objectification of women and that's disgusting. And how could your sister do that? And it, all it does is make us all look bad. And, you know, all of the things that they were learning in college about, you know, women's lib, which, you know, it, it, anyway, he, it, it made him so angry, but he ended up going to West Point and doing amazing. So yeah. well, that's <laughs> he, good. he's like, I don't, uh, anyway. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. More people become uh, unhappy. More women become unhappy in women's studies programs than any other group of people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I like when you open my door, Forrest. I like when you help me with my yeah, luggage. I know. Yeah, my, <laughs> yeah, my, my, my wife is a badass businesswoman, but she likes that too. Yes. Yeah, uh, I, I don't, open, I don't, I don't open the car door often enough. Yeah. Um, oh, which, see, Oris, you better step up your game. <laughs> I think, I think, I think I need to. I think I need to. Um, what opportunities opened up to you that may not have opened up to you because you were a playmate after, after you kind of you know got kind of got out of the the, the thing about being a, a representing the brand itself? What what things opened up to you? What things opened up to me? Yeah, that um, might and actually and, and kind of more specifically have... that that might not have. What opportunities opened up to you that might not have opened up to you had you not been uh, in, in, the, in the Playboy world? You know, uh, oh gosh, I mean, where to begin? I, I think without Playboy, I wouldn't even have the confidence that I had to run a business and learn the things that I needed to learn, um, social skills, um, Oh, gosh, being able to take a blow, <laughs> you know, like, like being, getting my feelings hurt or whatever, but opportunities, um, I, being on the radio, learning, um, a side of entertainment. I've, I've, you know, radio interview after radio interview helped me television appearances helped me. Those opened doors, you know, and, I think that it still does. Um, you know, a lot of people will beg to differ. I know girls that love acting like I do and say that it closed doors for them. Um, now I don't even think it's an issue. Like I still love acting and, and I'm actually looking for an agent right now because I'd, I'd like to get back into it. I, I, I always keep my gears turning. I love acting. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, the playboy playmate. Um, I can look back and say, maybe I wouldn't have gotten a national uh, McDonald's commercial because of playboy. <laughs> uh, not to flip this, because you said what doors opened. I'm just, I'm just sitting well, here. That, that would actually happen. So you, you did not get one because. Well, of- no, 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 no. But those are the things that, that. They, they was, look at yeah, yeah they say ah oh, you know there's certain things that don't you know don't go um yeah. you know with the playboy brand are you being a part of that but but then you know that i i don't know and i was so funny about hollywood i left hollywood it scared me so it, it was a lot really fast a lot of opportunity looking back i mean i i got phone calls from tristar um people asking me to be in movies uh and then celebrities that were asking me out and i won't tell you who but oh, i would, come on I'm now like, you got i can't on. because why i know i know oh, come on um, give me a, you got i mean a, i'll i'll got, tell you a funny one just you can because give, you, you can he would laugh a, 
You can one give of up them, one name. We I know one, one of them. Everybody knows because I think he loved all the girls and good for him. And I, I, I just love him anyway. I'd love to be back in touch with him. I don't keep in touch with him, but um, Scott Bayo, but mm-hmm. I won't tell you any, anyone else, but, but he wouldn't care. I know there's other people that would care. Come on, come on. <laughs> Come on, get a little, get a little name, a few <laughs> names here and there. It's a, it's a, oh and it'll, it'll, it'll be good. It'll be good for their career to be mentioned on the old guy talks to me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I know. So um, let's kind of get into a little bit of, about your personal life. Um, <laughs> Because we've already talked, <laughs> we've already talked about you being naked. Let's uh, be, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it got really personal here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how did you happen to meet your husband? At a bar, at, at a, a country bar. bar. My sister, oh. uh, our friends owned it, Dylan's Country Bar here. Um, Jeanor, we call her Grandma Nor, uh, Lenore Lannon, and she, my sister was working for them selling roses she wasn't even old enough to uh bartend yet and she ended up bartending great bartender um now she's a real estate agent um but anyway she called me and said you really should come here i feel so bad for this lady she's teaching line dancing and no one's here and i feel bad for her so tiffany sloan who was a playmate also she's no longer with us sadly um she uh, she and I decided to go to Dylan's Country Bar. Mm-hmm. And I see this guy sitting down with a black cowboy hat. And I know this sounds so funny, but I got this like goosebumps when I walked by him. I'm like, that was weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then um, and then his friend asked me to dance and we were two stepping and Bulldog, who's also no longer with us. So sad. Um, we loved Bulldog, but um, he was in my brother, my my brother, my husband's squadron. They were there doing red flag at Nellis. So these are Air Force guys. Somebody told them, go to Dylan's Country Bar, 90s. It was a big deal. And um, and then it, when when Bulldog asked me to dance, I I saw that my husband at the time, I didn't know him. He was sitting down and he was mad. I could see like a little kid. He wanted to ask me to dance. So I said, did you want to dance? (laughs) And he stood up and he's six foot eight. And I was like, oh my gosh. (laughs) It's so funny. We're really funny because I'm, I'm short and, and he's very, very tall, but that's all she wrote. We were married very quickly. I don't recommend that but it's, it's worked for us. I don't know. Uh, I, well, I, I got married very late in life, but actually my wife decided to marry me before we actually physically met. So it was really? kind of, yeah, yeah. That was, that's a, that's a whole, that's a whole long story about that. Um, wow. Do you need accountability? Are you looking to change the course of your life, but have failed to keep on track? Too often we take in information and fail to act. Do you need an accountability program to stay the course? Then go to www.thestandard.academy and find out about my accountability program that goes with my course that helps you find out what you want, why you want it, and how to get it. The accountability program keeps you on track to get results. Has being a playmate affected your family life in any way, your history? Um, I know it bothers my husband, to be honest. Um, you know, those, he, and that's a thing, you know, you want your wife to be your kind of your secret treasure, certain, you know, especially new, you, you, it should just be your, my husband's old fashioned, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like you, I should be the only one that's ever seen you naked. That's Mm -hmm. it. That's the deal. So he hates it. Um, but he's fine. He's proud of me. He, you know, I think in a way it's also added an element of, of kind of an element of how do I explain it? Like he's, he's, it, it's, it's helped in the bedroom in a weird way. <laughs> so, I can't believe I said that. Okay. <laughs> 
But anyway, so, so, I, so, so, I think... so Karina, can we get in more into the details of that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's funny. So, so yeah, he, it, there's times when it bothers him. There's times when he, you know, it's pretty sexy. He thinks it's awesome that I posed for the magazine. Oh, good, good. So, you, so you're not going to share any more details on that particular aspect. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so you've had a, a a significant and varied career as an actress lately, and you've done some other things. Because uh, I want to ask, actually ask you about that. But uh, tell us, you know, you, you, I, I saw that you sent me the, the uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, the, the movie reel? Or is there, is there a specific term for a kind of a, a synopsis of some of, the, some of the roles that you've played? And uh, there's kind of a wide variety of, of character types that you play. Yes, I love it. I love to play. I love to become different characters. It's, it really is an art, you know, that's why the actor will say it is a craft, you're, you're crafting characters, you're putting them together. It's hard work. Um, it's fun work. It's thrilling. Uh, I, I know, I think the reel that I sent you, it is, it's all over the place. And, mm -hmm. and it's fun to play some of those wicked characters. I just, I just played three different characters in a horror movie. Um, and these things find me because I don't have an agent, but I love to keep my gears turning. I'm always, sure. I'm always working on it. I'm about to do a short film with a kid that um, I just, I went and auditioned for a short film. I love to help out filmmakers um, and it keeps me sharp. Um, it, I love it. I love storytelling. I love, um, I love the, the investigation aspect of it. I love the you know, interpretation. I love interacting and I love the, I just love the whole thing. I love actors, you know, I love actors mm -hmm. and filmmakers and I love that world. I love being on set. Um, my nieces are about to be in a, a music video with, I love this director and he asked me and I used to teach acting. I love teaching it. I, I just love it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and so I, uh, I've, I've recruited them. <laughs> They're going to be in a music video. And I, I know my, my youngest niece, um, she's really interested in acting and, and I'm happy about that. So good, good, good. Now you've done some stand-up comedy also, some uh, improv. I have, um, I got into improv. I love, I love improv. Um, and then took over Alibi the show uh, that isn't a show. <laughs> I was taking an improv class. I always wanted to do Second City and never had that opportunity. I've done mm -hmm. IO West in, in LA, but never got to do Second City. And one of the alum, uh, Matt Donnelly and Paul Mattingly, they're two great improv artists here in town. Um, and, and Matt uh, has shared his wisdom. He had a class that I was in, but then he's the one that started the show. And he said, you need to come audition for my show. And I'm like, I'm just learning this stuff. <laughs> but um, I, I love comedy. And then I love the, the math of stand up, and it's terrifying. And I've only done it four times. And I want to keep doing it. I just haven't been, I haven't gone up. It, it's, terrifying and <laughs> yeah well i i mean i agree i can attest to it i i've, I've done stand-up not three times and oh you have see yeah yeah it. yeah and and i you know i i I, uh, I i took a class and then the the, at the graduation was doing a five minute routine in, in a club and it is it is terrifying brutal. yeah and and, <laughs> with, brutal. and and not only that but you you if they don't laugh Oh my gosh, it's the longest five minutes in the world. Oh my gosh. If you don't start off with a laugh, you're just going, you're just kind of like going, oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. And it goes south from there. And and there's so much to learn. I'm so grateful for the show because I got to play a character in my show. So I got that one-on-one -on -one and I've learned to read a close audience, you know, and 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 there's certain things that I learned there that helped me. And I got some laughs, which felt good. Mm -hmm. But the fourth time I went up was so bad. But that's what, it, you know, yeah. you have to bomb. And and my, the first three times I got laughs. I mean, I, I was like, wow, I felt so. And the first time I ever went up, Hannibal Buress decided to, and it's a dive bar here at uh, Rebar off of Main Street. 
And Hannibal Buress, I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope he didn't see my, because he signed in after he just found the open mic apparently to try his new stuff, but he's a great, I love his work from, mm -hmm. especially in like 2014 ish, but anyway. Okay. Um, so you've done that, you've done the improv comedy and stuff like that. So now you also have a podcast. <laughs> yes. Oh, so I, I'm going to go back. I just want to go back because I want to finish this up. Uh, tell us about your show, Alibi. So Alibi is an immersive theatrical experience. Um, you get a text when you purchase your ticket online, which we're not back up and running yet. We're probably going to bring it to Main Street because Fremont is a mess right now. But it was downtown Las Vegas, which I love. And it's a clue solving pub crawl with comedians and improv mm -hmm. artists, some of the best in town. I mean, Penny Wiggins, she was in The Amazing Jonathan. She's one of my very favorite humans and she's so funny. And some of these artists just make people cry laugh and it's a gift. So it's a silly good time. You get a text from Cuddles the Showgirl that it, I'll just tell you this because I don't want to give it away because we will be back up and I want people to come through. It's uh hi, this is Cuddles. Hi, sweetie. This is Cuddles, the showgirl. Meet me at the big heart outside of Container Park or wherever, you know, it'll probably be a new place now. And then you go and you have to be on time, obviously. And then it starts from there. You, you drop into this experience and it may or may not be criminal. And then at the end, <laughs> you find your alibi. <laughs> Here and not go. the way you would expect. Okay. And you just need a, a wild group of people and you don't know who's in on it. And it's a lot of fun. That sounds like that's how it, it does sound like a lot of fun. Um, tell us about your podcast. Okay. So the bunny chronicles, um, the bunny chronicles that you can listen to on most platforms. Um, Echo Johnson, Miss January, 1993 came and stayed with me for a convention that we both decided to come, you know, sign autographs, make a little bit of money. And we were sitting by my fire after signing autographs and having a bourbon. <laughs> and I was telling her about a documentary that I'd like to do. And she was telling me about a podcast she wants to do. And she goes, I would love for you to be my co-host. And I'm like, no, I, because I don't talk about Playboy. I mean, this is rare, Orist. I don't. I, I don't like people to know that I did it just because I don't like them to have an idea of, you know what I mean. I, and I love acting. Like this kid that I'm about to do the short film, he has no idea. <laughs> I'm going to play a grieving mother and, you know, all the makeup off. And he has no idea what I did. Um, but um, the podcast. So so she asked me to do this. I'm like, I don't want, I, I don't want to do this. Then I'm pigeonholed back to Playboy, you know? And, and then the more she told me about it, I thought this does sound like fun because I love all of the people I've ever worked with for Playboy. Mm -hmm. And so we've had legends, you know, from photographers to uh, the, um, you know, uh, everyone. <laughs> um, it's been fascinating. The first, uh, gosh, Pat Lacey that ended up, we called her the bunny mom. She wrote a book called the black bunny hop. And it, we've just, the butlers, uh, we're going to have playboy security on and, and just hearing their, um, stories and, and what it was like working for playboy from their perspective and, and what they thought of Hef and, and it's really been an homage to, to Hef and to the company. And it's been fascinating and I've enjoyed it more than I thought. And then I ended up with breast cancer. So my last radiation treatment was April 15th. And now we're back, we're getting ready to get back into the studio because we only did one season. And then I got, oh. I was diagnosed with breast cancer, which was out of nowhere, but it all went well. It, okay. I, it, I'm it glad all, to hear that. So grateful. So glad so to hear grateful. that. Yeah. yeah. So um, when you look back at what you've done, is there anything that you would say, like, I wish I'd done that differently? 
yeah. Um, again, I love acting. I love my husband, but I would not have gotten married so young. I would have recognized the love that I have for storytelling. I would have put myself in school no matter what. <laughs> I would have gone to, I would have loved to go to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in um, England for four years, you know, right out of the shoot, maybe right after I did Playboy, or, you know, this would have been something I would have done instead. Um, and then, and just my only regret, and then maybe go to New York, um, do some theater in New York and, and, and do some work there. And then, you know, be in Hollywood, um, really appreciating what it is to grow as an artist. But aside from that, that's my only regret. And it's not really a regret because I've, I've gleaned a lot from all of those things anyway. <laughs> and I still learn. And I, I, I've, I've been blessed to have some great teachers and, um, and then life as my teacher along the way. So, mm -hmm. so what do you see for yourself in the future? I see, you know, if we're still, if we're still here as a free nation, <laughs> with the way things are going. Um, I, th I, th I think we got a big turnaround coming. I hope so. I hope so. Um, I, I would love to make great film great entertainment um i would love to make people laugh i see um i want my husband to be able to retire <laughs> so that he doesn't have to pay for my dreams i'd like to bring them into fruition more which i think i think it's all coming together which is nice uh i would love to direct and um and just work more on the things that I, I love and, and help others with it as well. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if that was sp very specific. I think that was, that, that was right on point. Uh -huh. So Karina, um, before we end, before we end this interview, I want to give you one last opportunity to drop some names on us. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, I don't know who I would drop. <laughs> oh man. I'm a nobody. <laughs> you're, you're, I'm a nobody. You're, I don't know you're, anybody. You're 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 being I know I've i I have a picture and he probably doesn't even remember me. Uh Dean Kane and he loved my brother. I remember we were all at uh the mansion. So Dean Kane, um, Wesley Snipes. I'm going way back to the mansion. Wow. Okay. Um, Wesley Snipes. Then there's, you know, yeah, yeah. I think of the celebrities I've met Ian sure. Spring, that, okay. that that stand out to me because they were genuine good humans that I probably should have kept in touch with. Um, sure. uh, okay. I mean, I, of course, I worked with Chevy Chase. I've worked with Whoopi Goldberg. I've worked with you know, not to, if I was to name drop. Um, other than that, I don't. Those are pretty good names. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. That's all right. That's all right. I thought I'd just give you that one last opportunity. So, Karina, I uh, I think you know I appreciate you coming on. Old guy talks to me uh, because it was an opportunity to find out about something that you kind of you kind of know about. You you kind of think you know about it, but you really don't know about it. And uh, so it, it, it was, I, I find that this was a, a fascinating conversation going into the world of, of Playboy and what it's like to be inside, inside that world. And uh, even the people that uh, hate on you are probably, they're probably more <laughs> as jealous as anything else uh, to, yeah, to, 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 to a certain extent regarding that. So I want to thank you for coming on the program, I, coming you. on the interview. Thanks and, for uh, having me. My pleasure. This is Oris, the official old guy at oldguytalkstome.com, a podcast dedicated to helping older guys create kick-ass lives for themselves and those that they love. And women, if you want to know what guys think, listen to the podcast too. And I want you to do several things. I want you, first of all, to share this uh, podcast. I want you to subscribe <laughs> and I want you to rate. And also, I want you to give me a 
review. And if you give me a bad review, I'd love it. As a matter of fact, if you're a rabid troll who wants to, <laughs> like, to continually give me bad reviews, to continually tag tag my social media, uh, please do. Uh, the social media links are, 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 are in, the, uh, in, in, the, in the program notes. And I love, like I said, I love my troll. Maybe if you tag me off enough, maybe I'll send you a t-shirt. Uh, so, I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Until next time, remember, it's all about creating a kick-ass life for yourself and those that you love. Thank you for joining Dr. Orrest and his incredible guest. Like what you heard and learned? Then be sure to do three things. One, subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Two, share this with someone who may need to hear it. Three, leave a review and rate this podcast. Opt in at www.thestandard.academy forward slash magazine and get our free digital magazine with savings, articles, and deeper dives into cool controversy. Be the guy who takes action. Without action, you're not going to get the results you want. Thank you again and make it a great day.